The FBI has arrested dozens of ISIS sympathizers in the U.S. this year. It's keeping an eye on hundreds of others. ABC senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas tracking that homeland threat. Good morning, Pierre. Good morning, George. Even though no credible threat to the U.S. has been identified, today the FBI is intensifying surveillance of suspected ISIS sympathizers here at home, taking no chances. In the wake of the Paris massacre, security officials are expanding the police presence at soft targets around the nation, including in Times Square. Today and this week, Americans should expect to see additional security near mass transit. While this is a visible show of force, nearly 1,000 terror investigations are underway right now in all 50 states, many involving ISIS. ISIS is much more uh, capable. There are more of them. This is a much bigger threat than we ever faced from Al-Qaeda. More than 70 suspected ISIS supporters arrested or confronted in the last two years. Many identified after their communications were intercepted. A Boston man shot by police after he was wielding a knife specifically chosen to mimic ISIS executions. A Florida man, authorities linked to ISIS, allegedly planning to plant a bomb in the sands of a busy Key West beach. A suspected sale of ISIS radicals in the New York area, accused of planning to attack the George Washington Bridge. One of those suspects allegedly stabbed an FBI agent in the chest during a search of his home. But this morning, senior security officials tell ABC News the sophisticated layered attack in France may have revealed a new tactic by ISIS. They are worried that ISIS may have deployed new encryption technology, allowing them to communicate off the grid, invisible. I've been complaining about going dark, the ability to go dark. I think you're going to see that's going to play a significant factor in this event. Very interested to see what type of phones they're equipped with, what type of apps they had on those phones. We don't yet know why this plot went undetected. It could be that something was missed or that the killers did not use smartphones or computers to communicate. But if they're using new encryption technology, a key security official told me this weekend, it's a game changer. George. Thanks, Pierre. Let's get more on this now from the chair of the House Committee on Homeland Security, Congressman Michael McCall. Congressman, thank you for joining us this morning. We just heard Thanks Pierre so Thomas say we don't know why this went undetected. But the ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, told me yesterday this was an intelligence failure. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I think, um, look, the fact is it went undetected under the radar. Uh, there are reports that Iraqi intelligence warned about a plot uh, this one was so sophisticated and so well planned out and coordinated in advance. I think that's what concerns us the most about the fact uh, that there was almost zero intelligence on it. And so if that can happen in Paris, uh, it can happen anywhere in Europe. And my concern is chairman of Homeland Security, it could happen in the United and that, States as that well. That gets to my question as well. The White House saying over the weekend that there's no specific and credible threat against the United States they've identified right now. Do you agree based on your briefings? All the briefings I've received indicate there are no specific and credible threats. However, we stopped 99% uh, of this stuff, but they only have to be right one time. And I think um, that's what we're worried about. Uh, in the Iraqi intelligence uh, warning, they also warn about plots in the United States. Uh, and so that's, I think, what, what intelligence officials, Homeland FBI now, are looking very closely at. We have over 900 investigations actively in the United States in all 50 states. Do you believe that there are ISIS sympathizers directed by Syria in the United States right now? Yes, I do. We, we've arrested over 70 uh, ISIS followers uh, over the last year. That's more than one per week. Europe, I think, has a far more serious threat than the United States. We have hundreds of Americans who have traveled from the United States uh, to Syria and Iraq to fight and train. And 50 of those have come back. Those uh, persons are being monitored uh, as we speak. And that has many people concerned about President Obama's plan to bring in up to 10,000 new refugees from Syria. Uh, you've got governors of two states, Alabama and Michigan, saying they're not going to take in Syrian refugees. What should be done right now? I think the president ought to uh, suspend that program, uh, put a moratorium on it until we can have assurances it can be done from a, a security and safety standpoint. Uh, to, to vet these individuals. When I talk to the FBI and Homeland Security officials, quite honestly, George, they tell me they just don't know who these people are. On the other hand, I think we, if we're going to do this, we got to do it right and make sure uh, it's uh, done with security in mind. Mr. Chairman, thank you for your time this morning. Thanks, George.